we think about this group of students who have not been achieving that I think we're all we all are concerned about what where do you see technology really playing a critical role to, do you any one of the things when we were uh, writing the common core standards we were charged with base, basing it on evidence rather than uh, politics and one of the important sources of evidence was comparison to high performing countries and I've uh, been to schools in Japan and in Singapore uh, and just to set the record straight there's a half a dozen Asian countries recently joined by Finland and Canada who outperform the rest of the world and we're part of the rest of the world and I think we're going to see in the next couple of years uh, their studies that many of our states uh, are better than almost all of the countries in Europe and as a nation we're like an average country in Europe uh, for example Germany has never outperformed us so it just it's not the story you read in the paper so the real question is what are these high performing countries doing and uh, and this what Emmett said about California is certainly true if you removed California which has 13 percent of the kids the average for the rest of the country would float up and it would be a little different story we're really weighing weighing this nation down uh, but the when, what you see in Japan is the main technology they use is the blackboard still they will bring the rest of the technology in but they're they're going to wait until it grows into their way of teaching in Singapore they're experimenting in a limited number of schools with giving every kid uh, a computer the reason that they're uh, going slow is that their teaching method is social that they the the main way kids learn about <coughs> 60% uh, of the time in a typical lesson is spent with kids listening to other kids explain things and they're going around to get the different ways of thinking explained and so they're going to bring the technology in when the technology can help kids explain things to each other so you see uh, you see in the Singapore case one of the things the kids are doing is producing with the technology videos explaining things to each other so they can do more asynchronous explanation and it's not the kid communicating with the computer as much as using the computer as a productivity tool in a workplace which is the, happens to be the classroom and the teacher having their own productivity schools and I just want to aff affirm what Preston said learning is motivating it doesn't have to be fun the, being successful and achieving something is the most reliable motivation that we have to bet on. So. We're actually seeing this uh, a similar thing to what Phil was uh, just mentioning about students teaching each other and, and the video type thing. I think that's certainly the most effective part of it. I mean, uh, video in the hands of um, teachers is great. Um, video in the hands of students is awesome. Um, some of our local students in one of our and at Gunn High School in Palo Alto have actually started their own company and what they're doing is they're taking the um, their instructors lectures that they think are way over their head and these are advanced physics and advanced calculus classes etc and they are reinterpreting them with their own videos at night um, and, and they're, they're absolutely starting a, a business around it as a startup to explain the in, te in student language what that concept really meant and I mean it's just incredible I mean you know and finally we're getting students doing that sort of thing and that's wonderful and they're and they're turning around and teaching the teachers and so it's not only about the the technology it's about the different methods and one one of the things that we've all recognized for many years but yet not put in practice I think is is more like peer review um, in some of the classes where students are actually um, do criticizing each other's work or, or evaluating each other's work. It's so much more effective than it is just when they do an assignment for a teacher. Because teachers have gotten used to over the period of time, you know, accepting poor work and so they've given them a low grade and they've, you know, mar marked up the paper and that sort of thing. But when they have to perform for, their, for each other, it's a whole different thing. 
And then when they are able to take what they have learned as a, and, and do the final group assignment and give it to the teacher, it's at a hugely different level. And all the instructors that are using that kind of methodology will, would agree. Um, certainly all the ones that I've talked to or that I've seen in classrooms. And then the students frequently will take their work and put it on whether it's YouTube or something or other else. And so they want it to be really good. And they want it to be good for their peers, not for their teacher and not for their parents. So it's for their own intrinsic learning. And I think that's where we want to get is we want our students to be really excited about their own learning. Um, it's interesting that I think where the state of the industry is right now, the way we focus on it at Rocket Chip is still more, I mean, technology is not the silver bullet. It really gets down to teachers and leaders and, and getting the tools in their hands and making sure they're effective <coughs> enough so that they can really use them. So where we focused at Rocket Chip is really um, taking the data. So in the ecosystem of our data and the ecosystem of our lessons, how do you get mostly practice and independent practice for students at their level? Teacher really has control of it. So I just taught a lesson on it. I can assign it, a student can practice it, and then I can immediately in real time get data back in an effective way that says, hey, this group mastered it, this group didn't, so then can kind of shift my instruction, if not in that day, the next day, and actually kind of better meet students' needs. That's where we're at. I mean, Phil, Phil is hitting the nail on the head. I think the real next big step, and we don't see a lot of this in our programs, is learning's very social, right? If you come to a school and just how kids interact, and especially at the elementary level, um, we were not seeing that yet, right? Like part of the ideal, there's a saying learned as a young teacher um, that 70% of what you teach or what a student teaches to another, they're gonna retain. 30% of what you teach the teacher, they're gonna retain. Um, and so, you know, the, the learning is very kind of one-to-one -one with the computer rather than what happens if a kid hits a wall, doesn't understand something, a light goes off or something goes to a kid who just mastered that lesson and can come over and teach that kid, right? Just really holding on to those kind of dynamics of the classroom and we don't, we don't see that yet. Everything that, like that we have to kind of manually build in, which we don't really have um, the capacity and don't have that kind of real-time feedback from the programs yet.